excuse me, Mr. Freeze. Hey. I wanted to, my name's Pat Canahan. I wanted to say thank you for all your support. Um, thank you for all your support. <laughs> this is the producer's caucus party. I'm really... The caucus for producers. Something like writers that. Writers and directors. Yeah. I'm not sure. It's such a hodgepodge. Those days, you know, today the rating thing I get 1.2, 2.5. You, you got everything. a 36 share on that, on that. As I recall, it would start on a Sunday night, I think, and then go to uh, Wednesday or Thursday or something. But the Sunday night, 8 p.m. time slot. Three, three nights, two hours each. Yeah. We enjoy, I, I enjoyed making that. It was very, it was very difficult, and it caused me a lot of serious issues with the finances and so forth. But eventually, once it got completed, it turned out to be very good. Very good. What about TV series for our viewers? What what TV well, series? I didn't. Uh, as, when I was in my business for myself, I did not make a lot of series. Well, tell us about one that lasted for at least a few episodes. Well, when I was at the, when I was at Screen Gems, we made Bewitched and the Bewitched series on the air nine years. Well, that's not so bad. Now, who produced Bewitched? Uh, Liz Montgomery's husband, Bill William Asher, was the producer. William Asher, and he directed most of the episodes with Liz. Of course, after the series was ended, they ended up splitting up like everyone. <laughs> Can't blame we had the same thing at, at the Donald Reed show. Her husband, Tony Owen, was a producer. <laughs> and uh, when the show was over, it was Splitsville. Well, you, you live together, you work together, you sleep together. You need a variance. You can't do everything together as work together, marry together, sleep together. That's too much together. I'm going to answer yes. <laughs> I'm finished. I'm up now. I'm going to start charging up. Uh, well, I'm still finishing a movie called The Wolf of Wall Street. Leonardo DiCaprio, Martin Scorsese is directing, and that comes out in November. Okay. I'm doing that. I may direct a project uh, in no uh, starting in the fall. Now, I was at the Q&A earlier. There's The Wall Street 2, but this is sort of a no, this similar is one. No, this is Wolf of Wall Street, a different it's story. Like, but Wall Street? It's about, it's about finance? A, it's about a particular guy who called himself The Wolf of Wall Street. His name was Jordan Belfort. It's a real guy. And his story story is pretty wild, pretty wild, so it's Now for, for our audience, they look you up on IMDb, of course, but your photo is on there. Can you tell us your name to our... Sure, my, my name is Rob Legato. Nice to meet you. Thanks for being with us. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Tell us your connection to creating the telethons and with Jerry Lewis. Well, actually, the truth is I did uh, 21 telethons. I, I did the uh, Jerry Lewis telethon from 1991 to 2011. Uh, so I came in about halfway in the history of the telethon. It, it was about 20 years old when I came in. Okay. Uh, and there were several people before me. But Jerry and I hit it off very well. We spent uh, a lot of time planning uh, those, those shows every year. Uh, and uh, and they were very successful. Now, why did you get in the telethon business, and what did you do before that? What kind of television were you what were you doing? Well, uh, most of my uh, my whole career has been uh, live events. I've I've been fortunate enough to either as an associate producer or a producer or a director to have done most of the major live event shows on television and musical shows, uh, variety shows. Uh, and all of those live event presentation shows. Now to our audience out there, I believe you're, you're are you Lee Miller? Yep. This is Lee Miller out there. If you ever want to see who he was behind the scenes, it's nice to meet you. Can you tell us your name and some of the shows besides Scrubs you work on? Uh, Dylan Shadinsky. Uh, I work on NCIS Los Angeles and Cougar Town, as well as Scrubs and some other shows. Now, was Scrubs, uh, I mean, there's not a whole lot of stuff on Scrubs you can do compared to Cougar Town, would you say? Uh, I would say there's a Opposite. lot of stuff on <laughs> Scrubs, yeah. Scrubs was pretty fun. Now, when did you first get started in the visual effects? Uh, 2002. Okay, so that's kind of recent, and already you're doing some huge, huge shows. Okay, what's um, when people want to find you for a new production... 
Uh, for example, tell us who comes up to you now and what kind of shows are coming down the pike. Uh, well, usually uh, we're a big post house, so they'll, they'll come to us for full service post and, and then they'll do effects with me because I work there. Tell us about Crazy Horse, your name, when it started and what show you're currently doing. Uh, Crazy Horse is a visual effects company. Uh, we started about five years ago. Um, it was uh, originally Robert Stromberg's company called Digital Backlot and uh, I met him on Master and Commander and we did uh, shots for Master and Commander together and then uh, we did uh, a few more movies, we did The Aviator and then we did uh, Memoirs of a Geisha and then we did uh, uh, John Adams and then after John Adams he didn't want to have a company anymore and uh, wanted to let everybody go and I said I'm not letting everybody go. Okay now what I can't believe is, is in the Q&A tonight you said the year 2001, which is only 12 years ago, that right. you were kind of beginning. Yeah. I find it hard to believe. Well, I started in 1997. I went to a computer school because I was tired of my previous life. And then in 2001, I moved to the United States, and uh, I did uh, work on a movie. Like, I did already learn uh, my, my trade a little bit, and I worked on a movie. I got an agent, and uh, I must have had some talent. That's all yeah, I can say. You're a prodigy. It's in yeah. the blood. I was a social worker and I was a cab driver. I met my wife in my cab. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We're from Seasons, Beverly Hills. Uh, I know Seasons nice very work. well. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> yes, in Hollywood we all do it on camera. I, I feel like I'm a student sitting in the audience learning because I found it to be fascinating. And it's something that my mind does want to understand. So I learn a great deal. Being in you think you could go home to your, your big computer, your heavily laden computer with programs, and do something similar to that? Maybe not yet, but I will eventually, yes. I got time. Don't you think Gone with the Wind would have been a little bit better movie with this technology? When they did a lot of matte painting and glass painting of that. No, to the contrary. I think a lot of movies that have a lot of the special effects would be better if they had a script like On With The Wind. <laughs> Very good point. Very well said. Let's hear about you. James Modern. James Modern, yeah. And um, I was, I'm just finishing up a movie, and I was talking about the next one with Paul, and the, the panel was terrific. It was really a great great session oh yeah yeah it was excellent and uh, my very good friend and mentor albert fisher organized it right here He's oh the man that has seen the future now we saw you earlier today yeah, yeah. He, uh, while you're living in it he brought me and now I've, now i know everything about visual effects so that's how quickly you're the modern you're the future yeah. and from old from old I'm berlin like, or somewhere yeah berlin, berlin yeah. yeah from berlin germany the old days well i'm trying to connect the past and the future yeah. because uh, i really do think like the the truth is it's art and it's been always there like the biggest thing that i've learned are composition really basic things storytelling composition um placement what makes a good shot and that is completely independent from any softwares yeah, that was interesting. Kind of a, a running theme between all of you guys on the stage tonight is the artistic background and the, the simple idea. Yeah. Look at the script. It's the eye. It's like the subtext. And look at that and then go from there and yeah. not overblow it with the special effects or the CGI. Yeah, so that's speak. a. Yeah. I mean, the interesting we were talking about, Paul mentioned, where, where production design now is its own department on a set, and visual effects is something separate, and you just had started to talk about it, but where those de that department is, those two departments are combined, more or less, and, and so that they, it's really, it should, it's, be, the it should be the same thing, because it's used so prolifically now in, in almost every film, to at least some degree, that it, it, it really should be. Well, I, mean, I mean, the bottom line is, the guy who is in charge of, of creating assets is the production designer and what they do is they have a computer and they build things in the computer to figure out is that going to work is that going to look good and then they build them out then comes the visual effects people that build the same things or the extension of the same things yeah. in a computer with a different program so it's kind of really like and, the, and then they have to sort of answer to the production designer it doesn't we, we like it's we, we play basically playing the same tune yeah. so in a way um, in the future, I think it's just going to be essentially the same department, and the the visual effects companies is is going to be part of the previous at the beginning, and the production designer is going to be part all the way to the design of the final yeah. thing because you want to have continuity in your environment. Yeah. And um, well, what's kind of interesting is that visual effects is sort of like 
a child of two parents, and one parent is the camera department, and the other parent is the production designer. Now the, the writer and the director really have to become a marriage broker between everyone, because it's, it's their creative vision that ultimately is going to bring all of these elements together mm -hmm. to make a cohesive end product. Mm -hmm. You are the future production designers. That will be the name on your shingle, as it yeah. were. Well, it's the future and the pasture. Well, I don't. <laughs> Would you think yes. really? Well, I mean, the production design will well, be you my mentor, and he'll come under your guys. Well, the, that's with their, hopefully interior, with their design background and their interior design background and their old film design background, they'll be coming under the visual effects well, person. Well, my my mentor. My biggest, the person that has influenced the, me the most is Robert Stromberg, and he's a matte painter, oh. and f became from matte painter he beca became um, a visual effects supervisor, and then he became a part of Avatar. He became par part of the design team uh, for Avatar, and he was a he got a production designer credit because he was basically moved from the from the uh, visual effects department over to the production designer department and he got one an Oscar he won two Oscars in a row for production design and is a visual effects guy so I'm not I'm I I think there's a reason why production designers have been there all along and they know what they're talking about and I work for the production design uh, yeah I work for the production designer and um, and I'm proud to work for them and working with them. Uh, I have no desire to be one at this moment, but it's essentially we're doing the same thing. We're working on the same thing, and it blends together. Well, it was also interesting when you when you showed the what the what you had done with the um, Boardwalk Empire, where you where there was there were the extras that had fallen and, and, and yeah. they were on fire, and you said you put one made one arm move up and down because yeah. you felt like yeah. it was... Yeah, now I was a director. But, no, but, but yeah. that's interesting because if you if you come into something early, right in the inception, then you can talk to the director about those kinds of things and you can talk to the production designer in, for about those kinds of things instead of having to add them later or put them in later as a... Well, not necessarily an afterthought, but, but no. it would be integral to the to the creation right from the beginning. That's what it's I think just, is fascinating. Um, I think it's, it is just a, like a, a creative, creative process is uh, is is really important to be alive, and it sort of can be a decision by committee. My name is Rami Katrib. I'm CEO of Digital Film Tree, and currently we're working on a host of shows, including uh, Cougar Town, NCIS LA, King and Maxwell, Mistresses, a uh, new show called Surviving Jack, which will be starting up, and a new show called Undateable, and a new show called uh, Ground Floor. And you did Scrubs, but that's no yes. longer running. We, we, we did Scrubs the last until season. it ended on the ninth season. Right, right, right. So, definitely. <laughs> you live long enough here, you, you do it in front of the camera. I live in Burbank. You um, live in Burbank. I've been an administrator for the caucus for 30-some years and love working with them. They're great. They do wonderful things, mentoring especially. Now I'd like you to mentor me. <laughs> <laughs> and this is going on the air. Okay. <laughs> Okay, nice.